What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanna talk about a way to add lights to a high-rise building using only SketchUp and InScape. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I wanna start off by saying there are things that you can do in Photoshop and other things in order to get this effect even better. I just wanted to give you a quick way to kinda of add some lights if you're using like a background building or something like that. And so what I'm doing is I'm just downloading a model from the 3D warehouse. In this case, I'm downloading the Spire by C before building. I'm just going to download this into my model. And the nice thing about this model, or maybe not depending on the level of detail you're looking for, is this is textured with photos, which looks great. And the other nice thing about it, if I was to like switch to shaded mode, is you can see how this is just modeled in here as kind of a flat building right now. And so what that means is we've got this building in here, and if we were to run it in InScape real quick, so if I was to run this in InScape, you can see how this is going to render this as a building with just the photo applied to the faces as the texture. So this would be great for like a background model or something like that, because you don't have to go in and model all of this geometry, because really it's just going to sit in the background. Like if it's off a ways or something like that, then uh, this is really going to be perfect for what you're looking for. Well, what I want to do is I want to teach you how to add a couple different areas on this face really quickly using textures so that you have kind of light. Um, coming off of some of the areas of this building. And so what we're going to do to start off is we're going to come in here and we're going to take a look at one of these textures. And so if we were to double click inside this group, you can see how this is just a face that we can edit in here. And so right now, um, this is just an image that's been applied to this face. Well, what I want to do is I want to draw a box across one area of this right here. So you can see how when I draw a box across this, this separates this face from the rest of my model. And so what that means is now I can come in here and apply a different texture to this face than this face. And so what I want to do in this case is I don't want to wipe out this texture, but instead I want to right click on it. I'm going to click make unique texture. And so when I make that a unique texture and then I sample it, you can see how this created a copy of this texture right here. Um, so my main building is just the south main face. My second part of the building is the south main face one. So that means this is a completely separate material. Well, since this is a completely separate material, we can actually sample it and we can edit it in the InScape Materials Editor. And so if I was to drag my window over here right now, you can see how this all looks kind of a, um, this, this all kind of looks the same. Like you can't tell that you'd split this off. But remember, we have this selected as a separate material. Well, since we have this selected as a separate material, what we can do is we can create that material or we can make that material into an emitter. And so if you remember, an emitter creates light inside of your model. And so all we're going to do to do that is we have this selected, we're just going to click on the button for self-illumination. So when I click the button for self-illumination, you can see how what this does is this makes this material an emitter. And so that means this material is going to emit light. So that means that this is going to show up like a light in here. And the first thing you're going to notice is this is super bright. And so what we're going to do and it's kind of hard for you to see, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this luminance value down until this light is up here, and you can see how this is actually emitting light inside of my model. And the other thing I may want to do is I may want to come in here and adjust my exposure brightness a little bit. Um, so I do have auto exposure turned on. You can turn that off if you want to, but um, I, I usually leave that on and then just drag this down a little bit. Well, you can see how now this area is lit up in the background. And I will say that you're probably gonna to wanna to come in here and play around with this value a little bit um, in order to kind of adjust the way that this looks. But you can see how this gives us this kind of exposed value right here. Well, that's great, but what we need is we need multiple different areas lit up. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take this area right here, and we're actually going to select the edges we're actually going to select it and we're going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode and I'm going to create a copy right here. Well, you can see how when it did that, it took, because I moved the face with it, what it did is it took this material and it applied it down here. So now 
if you look inside of Enscape, multiple windows are lit up. And so what we could do is we could just kind of randomly come in here and just place this on different levels. And you can see how the, the textures, whoops. And so this texture, for whatever reason, kind of jumped around on me a little bit. Um, so we're just going to do this again. So I'm just going to make a copy down here. And then I'm just going to come in here and create some kind of random copies. They're going to that are going to give me my kind of lit up windows inside of this model. So now, if I look at these, I have multiple different windows that are lit up in here. And again, I'm going to kind of adjust the material brightness in here. So I'm going to select this. And it's just kind of a question of playing around with the way that this looks until these look a little bit more realistic. You don't want them to be super bright, but if they're kind of off in the distance, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, you know exactly what these textures look like because we're using this as more of a context model and so what we might want in this case is we might also want some other windows over here and so we would just do the same thing where I would draw a rectangle across this face and I could right click on this and I could make this a unique texture as well and then I could also set this texture as an emitter and so now I can take this and just start making some more copies. And so again, I'm just kind of being a little bit random in this just because on a high rise building like this one, um, the lighting would be kind of random anyway. But you can see how now inside of Enscape, when I look at this, all of these lights are lit up as well. So you can use this to just randomly kind of add this in here. Now I will note, and I may make a video about this, um, I was reading some forums about creating an alpha channel. So creating a channel in Photoshop where some of these get kind of lit up more automatically. Um, I haven't really played around with that in Enscape yet, but you can see how this is a really good way to just really quickly add those lit windows onto a high rise to make it look really or make it look realistic in the background. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Obviously, this isn't something you'd use for everything, but if you're trying to create kind of a night scene and you need lit up windows in the background, this is a quick, easy way to do that in Enscape. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this method, um, about videos like this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.